Long before I was born, he came as the spearhead of an alien invasion. This world will fall. Like all the others. Please, we have families. Why does everyone keep telling me that? There are enemies coming from far away. I need warriors. Dressed like a bat. You really are out of your mind. I'm not the one who brought a pitchfork. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. The movie I'm looking at today is Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I put his name first for a reason. A lot of people online like to claim that this is Joss Whedon's movie. And I honestly don't think it is. It has a feel of a Zack Snyder movie, by which I mean there's a certain joylessness to it. Even with jokes, it's joyless. It's curiously inert. It's a dull movie. It's not a bad movie. Let's be clear. Justice League is watchable, but it's dull and it's not easy to watch. I yawned a lot and I wasn't particularly tired. It was just boring. Things happen on screen at, typically at such a frenetic pace that you quite don't know what's happening. It's lots of color, lots of explosions, to no real end. Being that Justice League is a Zack Snyder movie, you can take certain things for granted, such as it's going to look visually unappealing. This movie is not very visually appealing looking, though the color palette is lightened. I think that has a lot to do, from what I read, with Joss Whedon. And that is so immensely good. It's a lighter, it's a brighter movie. But, there's, it's like a weird pall hangs over it. It's very odd. But, it's worth seeing, if only to see what a huge course correction looks like. In fact, if you were to subtitle this movie, it should be called Justice League Course Correction. Because that's what this movie is. It's a huge course correction for the DCEU, or the DC Extended Universe. It ignores, essentially, events of Batman v Superman and Man of Steel, and casts Superman in a very heroic light. Which, if you've seen either of those movies, you know Superman is not a hero. Not by any stretch of imagination. Which, in fact, was the problem with the movie. It was a very unheroic, apathetic Superman, and they recast that entirely in this movie. They don't pretend that the Man of Steel and Batman v Superman didn't happen. They so twist the events of those movies, they should literally have a fake news banner pop up. Because what they say in this movie did not happen in either of those movies. But, as I said, this should be called Justice League Course Correction. And that's not a bad thing. Batman is less murder. I'm sorry, Batman is not murderous at all. Which is a good change, because Batman shouldn't be murdering people. Superman is heroic. Which, this should not be a shock. This should not be an unusual thing. And it should not be something you're making him into after the effect. That Superman is heroic should be a given. But in the Zack Snyder universe, it's not. And it is weird, initially. I mean, I, I read about it, I was expecting something blatantly strange. And it's odd, no doubt about it, it looks odd. But it's not, oh my god, take you out of the movie odd, it's just weird. And these days of CGI enhanced characters, I don't see why people have reacted so strongly about it, to be totally honest with you. I mean, I noticed it. In fact, I'm willing to wager if I had never read anything about the CGI removal of that mustache, I would have probably picked up on how weird his face looked. It just looks odd. 
And that's the thing of animating a face. It's, there's so many little muscles involved with it. Skeletal structure, muscles, all working in concert. And if you don't do that perfectly, it comes off odd. And that's the case with Superman. He just looks weird. But it's a minor thing. It's, once you notice it, I personally could move on from it. I didn't really care that much. It's not as bad as people make it out to be, just a little odd. So, the long and short of it is, Justice League is worth seeing, if only for the course correction it makes. But, that brings an interesting question. It's making course corrections it shouldn't have to make. And this is the biggest problem with it being a Zack Snyder movie. I've said this before, I've read online things that say Zack Snyder knows these characters, and I call bullshit on that. There's no way, no, that's really, actually that's not true. Zack Snyder either has no clue about these characters, or he doesn't care about these characters. One of the two, I'm not sure which. Reason being, if you look at Batman v Superman, the death of Superman is a seminal event in DC Comics. It spanned numerous issues, led to Funeral for a Friend storyline, but it's the idea that that's not a small storyline. You build up to that. That's capital you can never get back again. The DCEU cannot kill Superman again. Why? Because they just did it so badly. To do it again would just bore viewers. They literally crapped out. They should not have done that. So, and that Zack Snyder did do it, and only the second movie that Superman appears in tells me he doesn't get that idea, he doesn't understand the storyline, or he understands the storyline, but he doesn't care. I'm not sure which is worse, to be totally honest with you. All in all, though, Justice League is a decent movie. It's... Oh yeah, I should also mention, there's a petition online about the release of a Zack Snyder cut of this movie. Now, keep in mind, no one knows for certain if such a thing ever actually exists. Because Joss Whedon came in about two-thirds of the way after the film was completed and reshot a lot of scenes. So who knows if there is an actual Zack Snyder cut of length enough to make a, an entire movie from. But even if there were, it would be such a bad idea. Why? Because Justice League was dull. It was, and again, I repeat, it's not bad. It's just dull. It has no spark, no life, no fire in the belly. It's a curiously inert movie, and that's the weirdest thing for me. It's not that it's bad, it's inert. There's so much explosions and stuff, and flash running about, all kinds of things going on, but it's an inert movie. It doesn't move, which is weird. And I think I understand why. Zack Snyder, as a director, seems to have delusions of grandeur. In a sense, he thinks he's not what he is. I think Zack Snyder is essentially a more thoughtful Michael Bay, but Michael Bay nonetheless. And he's good at big things, explosions, special effects. He's not so good at small moments, small character building moments. And those are so important, to, especially a movie like this. Because it's through the small moments we learn who these people are, and we begin to care about them. And Justice League doesn't have a hell of a lot of them, because he's not good at that. And at least Michael Bay knows who he is. I think most of his movies are crap, to be totally honest. But at least he doesn't try for nuance. He doesn't try for little introspective moments, because he can't do it. If something's not blowing up or some monster special effect happening around him, Michael Bay is pretty much, he's just not the person to hire. And unfortunately for Zack Snyder, that's the case for him too. He's not a very thoughtful or introspective director. He does great boom, but small character moments, the moments that define a character, and it has to be repeated, those are what make a character interesting. The small little things, not the big things, he's terrible at. He is Michael Bay. But 
a Michael Bay who doesn't know he's Michael Bay. And that's the biggest problem of all. So if you haven't seen Justice League, I would check it out. I would avoid the 3D showings, be it IMAX or real 3D, just see a regular 2D version of the movie. And judge for yourself, it's not terrible by any stretch, it's just dull. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Peace.